Hi, uh, my name is Ray Rogers, and I'm proxy for uh, Dan and Michelle Richardson, representing 747 shares. You know, when Judge Kendall in 1999 ordered the pilots to go back to work, he made a statement. He said, if you were to look up bad labor relations in the dictionary, you would have an American Airlines logo beside it. So I have to ask some questions here today before I can cast my ballot for the election of directors. Uh, last year, Mr. Parker, you made over $18 million. Mr. Horton took uh, $19 million home. And Dan Gatton, who was the president of American Eagle, uh, his compensation was more than $10 million. Now, I'm not sure if the information I have is correct, but I now, on the proxy, of course, also your board of directors are taken care of very well, too. And many members of the board of directors, and in fact, I think all of them, also have other, other outside income and serve on other boards as well. Now, I read an article in the Telsa World, and I got to find out if what they said is true. They said that the American, uh, that American offered its uh, pilots at American Envoy a 10-year contract. And they were seeking $43 million uh, concessions or pay cuts. Now, the new pilots would make $23,000 a year. And the 10-year contract uh, would allow pilots to make up to $38,000. There would be a cap after four years. Um, now, I know that the pilots hadn't received any meaningful raises since 2004. And the pilot training costs can exceed $100,000. Now, is it true that an American Airlines pilot at one of your, basically your feeder airlines, would start out at 23000 a year and would be capped at 38000 and that would be part of a 10-year contract? Is that what 2,700 pilots were asked to vote on, which they turned down overwhelmingly? And uh, is it true? Are these, are these facts true that were printed in the Telsa newspaper? You have a question? Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, first off, um, we are at the end of this going to have a presentation and happy to answer all business related questions. Right now, as to the nominees, I'm happy to answer your question now, but just for, so we can get through the formal part of this meeting. Um, know this, there will be plenty of time afterwards for all sorts of business related questions. Um, but nonetheless, uh, the answer to your question is I'm not certain as to whether the Tulsa World facts are exactly right. Um, but what I do know is um, as it relates to uh, the Envoy pilots, uh, we asked, uh, we put forward a proposal that would make uh, the Envoy uh, airline competitive with other providers, and uh, they elected not to ratify that agreement, which is their choice, and that's, and that's where we are. We, we, they're, they're an important part of the airline. They will be an important part of the airline, uh, but they, they, were, they, were, they, were, um, they were given a proposal that they rejected. So we, how, how can American justify? I'll give an example. I fly quite a bit, so I had to take a commuter airline. This was some years ago. Right. I flew into Missouri, and I had to get over to Illinois. I got on a commuter. And I was sitting right up front there. That that time, they had the curtain up front. And I noticed, this is no lie now, that the pilots up there were nodding off to my chagrin. And I said, well, I better speak up, which I did. And I found out at that time from those pilots that they were making, I think it was between fourteen and $16,000 a year. Now, there's American Airlines, that's a pretty proud name. I've flown American a lot. Right. When I look at these kind of offers, I have to think of it more as a McDonald's airline or a Burger King airline. It's not an American airline. How can you justify, when you consider what the directors and the top executives are getting, how can you justify a contract offer like that? Now, I know you have three feeder airlines, and what I would probably look at and see what's happening now is perhaps there's going to be whipsawing of the employees within the American system. I mean, some airlines used to set up a non-union, a kind of a double-breasted outfit. Right now it seems to be more internal. But again, how? I ask again, how? And I ask the board of directors, how can you justify offering a contract like that to any employees? How do you justify it? Just answer the question. How do you justify it? Okay, thanks. Otherwise, I'm going to have to refer to American as McDonald's. Okay, not American Airlines, but McDonald's Airlines. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, again, uh, the, 
we justify it um, based upon, first, first and foremost, the pilots um, and all the professionals of American Airlines have, are um, extremely uh, competent and professional uh, aviators who take their jobs really seriously and do it exceptionally well and extremely safely. And we're extremely proud of the job they do. Uh, and that includes those that we, that we use uh, to provide our regional uh, flights as well. So we're extremely uh, proud of and pleased with uh, the qualifications and safety um, qualifications of the employees we have. Um, as to that contract, again, uh, we, put forward a we, we put forward a proposal, uh, which our pilots rejected, which is completely their prerogative. Uh, other airlines um, uh, have the same contract uh, and, or, or similar terms, and the envelope, and the envelope pilots chose not to accept those terms. That's their choice. So th they're living under their current contract, and we're abiding by that contract. Um, and as we bring on new flights, uh, they may go to different airlines who are who are uh, who have different who have different terms. So at any rate, moving on. With all due respect, yes. Okay, I can I want to be on record. You have not justified that contract offer or those paltry sums. You have not justified that contract offer or those paltry sums to the pilots. I can't imagine what the flight attendants and the ground crew are making. How do you live on that? That's what's happening in our society today. Corporate executives like American Airlines and Coca-Cola and Chevron are so damn greedy. That's what's, prob what's the problem out in the world today. I think you ought to look at yourselves in the mirror and begin to think of what you're doing to the American society and to the American worker. Look and ask yourselves, are you proud to do this? Because I sure wouldn't be if I was in your position. All right, thank you, sir.